Um, I'm Tiffany. I actually just completed my junior year at with Clark University. Um, there I study international development and social change and a concentration in peace studies. Um, I also use they, them, she, her pronouns. And I would say the identities that are most, I guess, important to me are on a college, I guess, academic level. I'm a first gen student. And on, I guess, a personal sort of level, um, I identify as queer for both my gender and my sexual orientation. Um, and uh, yeah, and then I'm also uh, a mixed race. I'm Puerto Rican, white, and Native American. So, given the racial tensions that have existed in Southern Africa in such a long time, it was just kind of continually recognizing what it meant for me to be within specific spaces and my comfortability within those spaces and what that meant. Um, specifically, when we would go to like Soweto, um, what it means for me to be not only like a student, but also in some way, shape or form, like as a tourist within that environment and how, like what that means um, in contrast to when we were in Cape Town, which is very white, very touristy and like what the differences are between those are not only within South Africa, but what it means for me to be operating within those spaces with my fellow students. Um, so I think for that, it's just constant like recognition and reflection on what it means for you to be in those spaces. I think as a queer person, I was a little nervous going into it. Um, but also I was nervous in my last semester just because I think that there is kind of like, a Western bubble, so to speak, especially with all my intersecting identities in how I can freely operate within spaces specifically in the US, um, where I haven't really ever felt many senses of danger um, in expressing my queerness. And so for me, I know that the dynamic specifically for the LGBT community in Namibia um, like legally are quite different than South Africa. And so it wasn't necessarily me feeling like afraid because of my identity. It was just how I was going to, I don't know, I guess relate to other queer Namibians because it is just a little bit of a different like legal context. Um, and I think as part of our group, I was a little nervous too, because once I got there and I met everybody, um, there were no other queer people. So I was a little nervous with that. Um, but through like conversations and I try to just use different language. So if people are like, oh, like my boyfriend, I'm like, oh, a partner or a girlfriend or something like that. That's the type of language that I try to use, not to just to kind of ease into it, I guess, for my own comfortability. Um, but I found that the staff and all of my fellow students were super accepting. And I know that that's not always the case with the student part of it. Um, however, the staff is so supportive and made me feel incredibly safe especially when we had our community day um, within like the first two weeks in your time in Namibia, you have a day with all of the staff and the students. And part of it is doing like really fun bonding activities, but another piece of it is having some pretty difficult conversations. Um, and you kind of go into like a rotation with one another, talking about different facets of identity with class, race, religion, gender, sexuality. Um, and 
being vulnerable in those spaces with those people was something that I felt very safe in doing because of the environment that they had created for us and welcomed us into. Um, so on a personal level, I felt really comfortable. Um, I would say on an academic level, I felt slightly less um, just because I felt with other students, it was something where there might have just been like, mm, kind of just like misinformation or just never had those conversations on like an academic standpoint. So for me, it was really awesome to have my internship with Outright Namibia, which is an LGBTQIA plus advocacy organization. Um, and I got to not only like meet other queer self-identifying people, but also I was able to explore queerness and learn about queerness in a South Af in a Southern African context with actual queer Namibians and get to have that like firsthand experience at what they're doing for the community and what the community is advocating for and striving for. I would do some reading if you can. Um, there's an incredible book that I bought when I was in South Africa and it's called They Were Queer and it has a bunch of poems and stories and like fiction and nonfiction um, from queer South Africans with like all of their emails and social medias and different things about them, but it really helped open my eyes to what I would be, I guess, further experiencing or seeing or learning about in the rest of my time there as a queer person. And I also think that another piece of advice that I would give is kind of changing the language. Um, being queer, it was a little nerve wracking for me when we were going into specifically the urban homestays in Namibia, just because a lot of our families and mine as well were quite religious. And that was like in the little bios that we were given. And also during the urban homestay, you're traveling between your classes and your internship, if you choose to do one, and your homestay. And so it was something where I felt more comfortable within the household just being like, yeah, like this is where I'm interning. Or I had a conversation at one point with my host brother and host sister about like relationships and the future and kind of just, instead of just omitting parts of my identity, it actually felt more freeing to kind of use the different language um, to like use a partner. Or we were talking about, um, marriage and proposals. And instead of discussing about like being proposed to, I was like, oh, well, I'm the type of person where like, I want to propose to my partner. So I think that shaping the conversation and using the language for me was really helpful, not only with the staff and the students, but also with the Namibians that I met. It made me feel more comfortable just being authentic. And I found myself really safe during my time in Namibia and South Africa. Like I never, I never felt like I was in any danger. Um, and honestly, there's a lot of really cool spaces in Namibia for queer people. Um, there's a place, I believe it used to be called the warehouse, but now it's called Brewer's Market. And it's a very like open artsy space. And when I had mentioned it at my internship, everyone was saying how it's so cool. It's like a recognized safe space. Um, so I would say do that, um, like go there, try to find those spaces. And also if you don't intern like outright, like I did, um, you definitely don't have to if you're a queer person. I just wanted to. I would say follow them on Facebook um, because they have a bunch of like public events. So you get to meet queer people of like all ages. Like I met some queer people that were there at this community dialogue at the age of 16. And they're like, hey, um, 
you should like come do this and this and this. Um, and then I met people that were much older, um, which as someone who is younger and has only been out for so long, it was really cool to interact with and hear from people that were older, specifically queer people who had lived through the apartheid and into now and how that all shaped not only their like personal experience just w as a Namibian but specifically within the queer community in Namibia. When I was looking up like little packing lists for Namibia or just different things about the LGBTQ community in Namibia. And this is after I had already applied. I'm like leaving in like two months to go. Um, a lot of things online said that LGBTQ people shouldn't go to Southern Africa, that it's like not safe. And I can only speak for South Africa and Namibia. And also I can only speak on my own experience. Um, But I would say that I felt really safe. Um, and as someone of a mixed race and also queer, it was a time where I never, f I felt most accepted by queer people than I like ever have outside of my own little friend group. I think for me, it was really, really incredible to be a to be brown and queer in that space because I specifically when I met other like queer female identifying people or non-binary people I just kind of felt like seen and heard and was able to relate on another level with them than I have than I ever have outside of like I said my friend group um, for instance, when you go to Cape Town, you go on what they call slave tour, um, because a lot of history in Cape Town is, and the history of it is built on slavery. And we were taken around the city and given a tour um, by a woman named Lucy. And she mentioned in the beginning of her tour about like living with her wife. And it was really funny because everyone in the group like turned to me. <laughs> um, and so I kind of was like, wow, this is like really amazing. Um, and it was the first time that I was like, I don't know, kind of having that like global connection in a sense. And so when it was all over, I went up and asked her, you know, what are some organizations I should check out while I'm here? Um, like, I would love to be able to connect with you, like, after this, and she gave me her business card, and then gave me a hug, and, like, told me to stay strong, and told me that, like, I am seen, like, she, that's what she said to me, that she sees me, and I think that while all of these maybe, like, touristy sites or Western countries have this very, like, I know, biased view because of the homophobia within some legislation um, and within Christianity in certain pockets of Namibia and South Africa. I think that it was really impact, like, really impactful on me that that was just kind of like dismantled throughout my time there. Um, so yeah, and I think that in my experience, it was really, really safe. And I think that just being open to that and finding those people who look at you and then you look at them, it's like, we see each other and we can learn from each other. Um, so yeah. <laughs>